Assalamu alaikum. The previous video in this series of history of English literature was a comprehensive one. We are having now the second video in that series and in this we will be having more glimpses of the old English period in England and its uh, famous works and authors that contributed to the English language of that time. So, I will be taking care of the fact that since history is a boring thing, I will be explaining everything in detail that after watching this video, you may not need to read from the books or watch another video. We talked about Beowulf and its uh, summary that what happened uh, with Beowulf. So, Beowulf is the greatest English poem and it is the first English epic. So, we should know what an epic is. Epic is uh, a long narrative poem in which the hero is of a gigantic character, villain also is having supernatural abilities and uh, he is also towering personality. There is a huge travel and there is long narration like that book is in various chapters and uh, that is quite in length. Moreover, there is always a voyage that is uh, fascinating as well as horrible one because uh, that has so many adventures within. Apart from all these, there are certain magnified themes. So, themes are quite sublime. So, these are chief characteristics of an epic. Uh, yes, they do have weapons of superior quality. So, sometimes gods also intervene uh, with the mortal beings. They help them, they aid them. So, Beowulf is also an epic as well as the greatest English poem and the first English documented poem ever. The Old English language or Anglo-Saxon is the initial form of English. So, the writing of English language and the transcript of uh, the English uh, evolved from the Anglo and Saxons when they came to England. So, the period is a long one and it is generally considered that Old English was spoken from uh, about 600 AD to 1100 AD. Many of the poems of uh, the period are pagan, in particular uh, Wilseth and Beowulf. So, these, uh, this period included the Anglo-Saxon literature, the Norman conquest, Cardamon's hymns, songs of Beowulf and uh, so many other smaller documented literature, but uh, the hallmark of that period was Beowulf. So, uh, it was the old English time when English was spoken and written in a considerably different way. So, the greatest poem Beowulf is the first English epic. The author of Beowulf is anonymous, we do not know who he was, nobody knows. It is a story of a brave young man, Beowulf, in uh, 3182 lines. So, this is what an epic is. Epic is always a long narrative poem. In this epic poem, Beowulf sails to Denmark with a band of warriors to save the king of Denmark. Uh, Beowulf saves uh, Danish king Hrothgar from a terrible monster called Grendel. The mother of Grendel who sought vengeance for the death of her son was also killed by Beowulf. So, Beowulf was rewarded and became king. After a prosperous reign of some 40 years, Beowulf slays a dragon, but in the fight he himself receives a mortal wound and dies. So, in the picture you can see that uh, Beowulf is fighting Grendel and he disarms him and uh, afterwards he has uh, uh, like a terrible rift with the mother of Grendel who seeks revenge upon Beowulf. Beowulf also kills her and afterwards uh, he is killed uh, when he uh, is having a confrontation with the dragon. So, he kills the dragon, but uh, he is eventually uh, uh, like uh, he receives such a wound that becomes fatal for him and he dies. So, the travel of Beowulf is also a travel for his uh, uh, to prove his bravery and his leadership qualities because in those days it was considered that a person worthy of being a king should prove his worth. So, traveling through the sea and killing the monsters was uh, these were one of uh, the chief qualities that were seen in those kings. So, the king had to earn honor. So, Beowulf sought honor 
using these two things like he traveled through the sea and then he killed the monsters he eventually became a king but he could not last long there are several topics in uh, the long narrative form Beowulf uh, first of all it is uh, the wrath of Grendel Grendel is uh, the monster who comes uh, to Denmark and he kills so many people so Beowulf goes and kill Grendel so the second is coming uh, of Beowulf Beowulf reaches there and uh, then he has a battle with Grendel then the monsters lair he goes to the lair where Grendel is uh, there he finds that Grendel is dead and then there's battle with Grendel's mother so there is also a movie Beowulf and it is uh, a good animated movie animation is quite lovely in that so you must go through that in order to understand Beowulf properly then there is last battle in which uh, Beowulf slays the dragon but receives a mortal wound and then there are spoils where uh, Beowulf dies and he has only one servant with him who is uh, his uh, loyal friend and then it is farewell in which uh, we see the funeral of Beowulf. So the poem concludes with the funeral ceremonies in honor of the dead hero Though the poem Beowulf is a little interesting to contemporary readers, it is a very important poem in the Old English period because it gives an interesting picture of the life and practices of old days. So I believe in this thing that all those studying literature should not uh, consider it uh, a boring poem, uh, should not consider it little interesting. I would consider it the most interesting poem of that time. So all those who are studying English literature or who are for any reason uh, liking any literature, they must go through Beowulf because it gives them the life and events of that time. And we know that uh, uh, this is literature that teaches us uh, the time and the culture and society of some particular era. If uh, we had not Beowulf with us, we could not know about Anglo-Saxons, we could not know about the way they lived, the way they fought, the way they behaved and the way they uh, uh, displayed their heroic deeds in war. So uh, every literature is uh, uh, linked with society. It is said that no literature, no society. If there is no literature, there is no society. If there is no society, there is no literature. Uh, I'll prove this thing saying that for first of all, if there is no literature, there is no society because every society is represented through a literature. We have Beowulf, we know the society of Anglo-Saxons and no society, no literature. If there is no society, then there are no authors to write about some particular subject. And if there is no writing available, we will not be knowing about the society. So society should be there for literature and literature should be there for the society. The difficulty encountered in reading Old English lies in the fact that the language is very different from that of today. There was no rhyme in Old English poems. Instead, they use alliteration. So you can see the highlighted one, the eightlings all within he saw. So asleep after, free from, grim and greedy, snatched sleep. So all these things are uh, proving the fact that uh, they used alliteration but not rhyming. Uh, for example, if you look at the first line, crept near, and the second line is Danes, and third is done, and fourth is saw, fifth is danger, sixth is across. So there is no rhyming in that, but yes, we find alliteration everywhere. Even the first line, when the night had fallen, the fiend crept near. So uh, fallen and fiend they are rhyming with each other. So we find alliteration in the Anglo-Saxon period. There was also wisdom poetry in Anglo-Saxon literature and that wisdom poetry was uh, more based on uh, certain topics which were uh, talking about uh, voyages of the people in which people traveled. So the decay of once glorious city of Roman Britain, this was a good literature of the time then the wanderer in which an old man talks about an attack that happened in his youth where his close friends and kins were all killed memories of uh, the slaughter have remained with him all his life and he talks about them he tells about his uh, 
nostalgic incidents. He questions the wisdom of the impetuous decision to engage a possibly superior fighting force. So he people in that time used the wisdom. They recalled the events that happened to them. So this was uh, totally a wisdom poetry. Then there was another work, The Seafarer. It is also a story of a somber exile from home on the sea, from which the only hope of redemption is the joy of heaven. Similarly, some other works, The Wife's Lament, The Husband's Message, all these things were based on certain uh, wisdom related topics. So, wisdom poetry was one of them. Uh, related to heroic tales are a number of short poems from the Exeter book which have come to be described as wisdom poetry. So this was the definition of those poems uh, which were taken from the Exeter book. So all these poems uh, bring several distinguishing themes. Some of them are related to the war incident that the hero is now in, in his old age is uh, remembering and recollecting his life events. Some people are on the sea and they are on a voyage. Exile was the major theme. So all these things contributed to the wisdom poetry in Anglo-Saxon literature. Since Beowulf is considered the representative poem of the time, there were other literatures as well. For example, uh, Witseth, Genesis A, Genesis B, Exodus, The Winderer, The Seafarer, Wife's Lament, Husband's Message, Christ and Satan, uh, Daniel, Andreas, Gulthuk, Dream of the Hood, The Battle of Malden, etc. So these are some finest examples of the Anglo-Saxon literature. The quotation is taken from the seafarer, a man must conquer pride, not kill it. That a person should uh, know how to conquer his pride, not to let it go, not to let his ego die. And from the Vandver, though woefully toiling on wintry seas, with churning oars in the icy wave, homeless and hopeless, he fled from fate. So you can see alliteration in that. There is not much rhyming, but you can see uh, the strength of the words. So the writer is showing his strength through the words, is proving his uh, artisanship through the words. So words are quite uh, powerful that are used in that literature. So we can see, we can make out how a person is feeling when he is exiled when he is shunned out of his place. This is his tragic uh, fate that he is uh, passing through. So all those things are explained in quite powerful words. There is classical and Latin poetry. Several old English poems are adaptations of late uh, classical philosophical texts. The longest is a 10th century translation of Boethus' Consolation of Philosophy contained in the Cotton Manuscript. Another is the Phoenix in the Exeter book, an allegorization of the day wave phoenix by Lacantius. Other short poems derived from the Latin based trade tradition, such as the Panther, the Veil, and the Patridge. So these were the classical and Latin poetries which were written in those times, in the time of Anglo Saxons. So, here we बहुत सारी चीजें एंग्लो सेक्शंस के बारे में जानने को मिलती हैं क्योंकि एंग्लो सेक्शन लिटरेचर बड़ा एक रिच लिटरेचर था जिस तरह मैंने बात की बेवुल्फ के हवाले से तो लोग बेवुल्फ को आजकल के लोग क्वाइट अनइंटरेस्टिंग भी समझते हैं इतना ज्यादा उसमें इंटरेस्ट नहीं लेते लेकिन लिटरेचर सोसाइटी से जाना जाता है और सोसाइटी लिटरेचर से जानी जाती है so, बेवुल्फ में जो उसकी कहानी है कि वो जिस तरह आया उसने अपनी वर्थ को प्रूव करना था उसने समुंदर का सामना किया उसने ग्रैंडल को मारा फिर उसने ग्रैंडल की मदर को मारा फिर उसने एक मॉन्स्टर ड्रैगन को मारा और उसके बाद उसी में उसकी उसको एक ऐसा जख्म लगा कि वो बच ना सका मर गया सो so, किंगशिप उसे मिली लेकिन उसके साथ-साथ उसकी जान भी गई सो so, बेवुल्फ को पढ़ के लगता है कि ये चीज उस रिच लिटरेचर और सोसाइटी का एक रिप्रेजेंटेटिव पीस है उसके अलावा सीफेर और द वेंडरर ये भी बड़ी जबरदस्त कहानी है द वेंडरर में एक बूढ़ा अपने पुराने टाइम को याद कर रहा है कि जिस तरह वो مختلف एडवेंचर्स पे गया और उसने अपने साथियों को मरते देखा और सारा वो नॉस्टैल्जिक वे में अपने आप को डिस्कस करता है 
सी फेवर में एक बंदा अपनी लाइफ के इवेंट्स बता रहा है कि जिसमें लाइक सॉरी द वैन फ्रेम में अपनी लाइफ इवेंट्स बता रहा है जिसमें वो बताता है कि किस तरह वो एग्जाइल हुआ फेट ने उसको आ, उसकी किस्मत में फेट में ये लिखा गया था कि वो आ, अपने घर में रह नहीं सकता तो वो एक एग्जाइल है उसकी एक डिसप्लेसमेंट है होमलेसनेस है वो किस तरह उस चीज़ को फेस करता है सामना करता है वो सारे के सारा इस जगह पे हमें पता चलता है फिर क्लासिक और लैटिन पोइट्री है एंग्लो सेक्सन्स की जिसमें बहुत सारे प्रोमिनेंट वर्क्स जिनका भी हमने तस्करा किया ये सारे उस एंग्लो सेक्सन लिटरेचर को रिफ्लेक्ट करते हैं एक और एंग्लो सेक्सन लिटरेचर की जो इम्पोर्टेंट करेक्टरिस्टिक हमें अभी तक पता लगी कि एंग्लो सेक्सन लिटरेचर रिच था पावरफुल वर्ड्स का इस्तेमाल होता था लिटरेचर सोसाइटी को रिप्रेजेंट करता था लेकिन इसमें राइमिंग नहीं होती थी तो राइम स्कीम के बगैर पोइट्री लिखी जाती थी एपिक्स लिखी जाती थी और इसमें एलिट्रेशन का यूज़ बहुत ज़्यादा था लोग एलिट्रेशन को अक्सर बल्कि तकरीबन हर लाइन में यूज़ करते थे एपिक के बारे में एक बार उर्दू में भी बता दूं एपिक एक लॉन्ग नरेटिव किस्सा होता है एक आ, बड़ी लंबी छोटी सी कहानी होती है जिसकी बेशुमार किताबें होती हैं बेशुमार एपिसोड्स होती हैं उसमें हीरो बड़ी यूनिक क्वालिटीज़ का मालिक होता है विलन भी बड़ी पावरफुल क्वालिटीज़ का मालिक होता है बड़े बड़े वेपन इस्तेमाल होते हैं बड़ी खून खुआर जंगें होती हैं खुदा भी उसमें इंटरवीन करते हैं जो इनके गॉड्स हैं सेल्टिक माइथोलॉजी के ग्रीक माइथोलॉजी के सारे गॉड्स जो इन्होंने बनाए वो सारे उसमें इंटरवीन करते हैं हर हर इलाके की एपिक के हवाले से फिर उनको वेपन्स भी दिए जाते हैं बड़े पावरफुल किस्म के गॉड्स की तरफ से उसमें उनको आर्मर्स मिलती हैं शूज़ मिलते हैं सोर्ड्स मिलती हैं शील्ड्स मिलती हैं एरोज मिलते हैं सो ये सारे का सारा गॉड्स की तरफ से गिफ्ट्स होते हैं गॉड्स भी इसमें पार्टी बनाते हैं कुछ एक साइड पर होते हैं कुछ दूसरी साइड पर होते हैं थीम एपिक का बड़ा सब्लाइम होता है बड़ा यूनिक किस्म का बड़ा टॉप क्वालिटी का थीम होता है ट्रेजिडी बड़े बहुत बड़े लेवल की होती है तो ये सारे के सारे जो थीम्स हैं ये सारे एपिक को रिप्रेजेंट करते हैं और बेवल्फ यकीन एक खूबसूरत एपिक है जिसमें हम देखते हैं कि एक बंदा किस तरह अपने इन तमाम नशेब वफरा से गुजर के बिलाखिर उसकी डेथ होती है सो राइटर्स ऑफ दैट टाइम सो टू इम्पॉर्टेंट फिगर्स इन ओल्ड इंग्लिश पोइट्री आर सैन वल्फ एंड कैडमन Sani Wolf wrote religious poems and the four poems Juliana the fate of the apostles and Christ and Ellen are always credited with him Cadman is famous for his hymn Alfred and Richard old english prose with his translations especially Bede's ecclesiastical history Alfred is another important prose writer during old english period he is famous for his grammar homilies and lives of saints Alfred's prose is natural and easy and is very often alliterative. So again we know the concept of alliteration was not only in prose but also uh, not only in poetry but also in prose. So alliteration poetry mein bhi thi prose mein bhi thi. Do aur bhi bade unique writers se kyunki hame Beowulf ke writer ka nahi pata. Cenewulf tha and Cadman so Cenewulf religious works usne likhe jisme Juliana hai fate of apostles hai Christ hai aur Elaine hai uske alawa Cadman jo ke him uski badi famous thi uske alawa Alfred hai Al uh, Alfred hai ye bhi writers apne hawale se uh, grammar homilies or lives of saints ye sare bade rich works hain uh, middle ages ke medieval ages ke jiske andar unhone बड़ा क्वालिटी वर्क कंट्रीब्यूट किया और जारी बात है आखिरी चीज़ कि उसमें एलिट्रेशन ज़्यादा थी एलिट्रेशन को अक्सर ये प्रोज में भी यूज करते थे पॉलिटिकल इवेंट्स इन दोज टाइम्स आर रिटर्न हेयर सो दीज व फेमस पॉलिटिकल इंसिडेंट्स इन दैट टाइम सो यू कैन सी दट वाइकिंग्स व देर दैन वाइकिंग फोर्स व डिफीटेड देर वॉज अ ट्रीटी दैन डैनिश फ्लीट वॉज कैप्चर्ड बाई एल्फर्ड द ग्रेट so there were so many events which were marked by this period this regime this time so ye us time ko bada rich banate hain sawale se ki jo viking hai wo kis tarah raid kar rahe hain landers friend pe fir viking jo hai wo ek lona mein ek monastery ke upar hamla kar rahe hain aur scotland jo hai wo samne aa raha hai unions ho rahi hain fir unko वाइकिंग्स को डिफीट मिल रही है ये सारे के सारे इवेंट्स मेजर पॉलिटिकल इवेंट्स थे 
उस टाइम के जिसमें हम मेडिवल पोइट्री और प्रोज पढ़ते हैं सो दिस वॉज ऑल फ्राम द मेडिवल पोइट्री एंड द मेडिवल प्रोज ऑल टूगेदर द मेडिवल लिटरेचर सो दीज आर द रेफरेंसेज दट आई यूज इन मेकिंग ऑल दिस डॉक्यूमेंट फॉर यू आफ्टर दिस यू मस्ट बी नोइंग क्वाइट इनफ अबाउट द मेडिवल एज सो ये जो फर्स्ट टू वीडियोज़ हैं एक ये वाला और एक इससे पहले जो वीडियो मैं ऑलरेडी आपकी खिदमत में सबमिट कर चुका हूँ इन वीडियोस को देखने के बाद आपको कम से कम मेडिवल एजेस क्लियर हो जाएंगे जिसमें आपको पता लगेगा कि वाइकिंग्स वगैरह क्या थे और एंग्लो सेक्सन्स वो आए उन्होंने इंग्लिश की बुनियाद रखी और एक नई ज़ुबान पैदा हुई एक मेल जोल से जर्मेनिक इन्फ्लुंस था उस पर सो ये सारे के सारा जो लिटरेचर है एक बहुत खूबसूरत फॉर्म में आपके सामने प्रजेंट किया जा रहा है इसी तरह एलस्ट्रेटेड वर्जनस आपके पास मिडल इंग्लिश के भी जल्दी आ जाएंगे सो सिंस हिस्ट्री एक बोरिंग सब्जेक्ट है लेकिन मेरी कोशिश यही होगी कि हिस्ट्री को आपके लिए बड़ा खूबसूरत और बड़ा ईजी बना के पेश किया जाए स्टेट यू थैंक यू वेरी मच